Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for the purpose of a point of personal privilege. The delegate has the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On this first day of Black History Month, I am reminded of the legacy of my predecessors. Through the celebration of Black History Month, we shine a light on the tremendous impact that African Americans have made on the history of our Commonwealth and our country. The tradition of celebrating Black History Month began in 1926 with Carter G. Woodson, native son of Buckingham County and founder of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. He pioneered the observation of Negro History Week, designated for the second week in February, coinciding with the birthdays of two giants, Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass, both of which have been celebrated by black communities since the late 19th century. I believe, Mr. Speaker, it is important that we continue to honor those who stood on the right side of history so that we are now fortunate enough to stand here today as a more diverse body serving an integrated commonwealth and community. Our forebearers had faith and labor toward progress for not just themselves, but for future generations. Mr. Speaker, as our Lieutenant Governor often reminds us, the future is actually now. I often reflect on when I was an ele elementary school student visiting this capital for the very first time. I recall two gentlemen with afros walking the halls. I would later find out that those individuals was, were then Senators L. Douglas Wilder and Bobby Scott. What an awesome sight to see. Mr. Speaker, those Virginia gentlemen were giants in my eyes then and are giants in my eyes now. As both were founding members of the Virginia Legislative Black Caucus, these gentlemen also established what we believe an organization focused on promoting uh, equity for African Americans and descent. From the beginning, the VLBC has been intentional about making no permanent friends, no permanent enemies, but only focus on permanent interests. Mr. Speaker, just as you recently expressed your appreciation for your role in this esteemed body, the importance of my position is not lost on me. As a delegate and chairman of Virginia Legislative Black Caucus, each day we are afforded to lead and advance for the lives of the most vulnerable. Since the establishment of, of the Virginia Legislative Black Caucus, Af African Americans of the Commonwealth have a voice at the table. Charged with advising the governor on issues such as economic justice, environmental justice, and criminal justice. In every corner of the Commonwealth, the, th the fact that we are a power time legislature has made this a challenge at times. That's why I introduced legislation to establish the African American Advisory Board. This board will help guide current and future administrations on issues of interest to the African American community. I am pleased to report that just last night, the House Rules Committee saw fit to send this legislation to the House floor uncontested. Next week, each of you in this body will have an opportunity to put your stamp on this legislation. With that, Mr. Speaker, I look forward to listening and learning as many of my colleagues will join me in, in using personal privilege for the balance of this session to reflect the contributions of African Americans in this Commonwealth, this community, and this country. And I will leave you with the words of my dear friend from Newport News, Delegate Price, do the work and be the change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.